I'm making this video just to clarify a couple of things I missed in the Soundscape S2000 review. And if you watched it, you know the card in the video was an actual Ensonic Soundscape by a sound card made by SPA called MediaFX, which uses Ensonic's chip and wavetable. Since then, I got my hands on actual Ensonic Soundscape S2000, which I'm gonna compare to the SPA today. The clarification I was talking about is about the actual manufacturer of these cards. There are two different versions, or layouts, of the media effects. The first version is the card I've got, and the second new one looks like this. Let's have a gander at the second layout first. If you look at the card, you should notice two things. SPEA sticker on the chip and Ensonic name on the PCB. This second layout was made by Ensonic and rebranded for SPEA, that's pretty much straightforward. My new card is actual and Sonic and looks exactly the same except for the SPA sticker on the chip. The first version, however, it's what's more interesting there is. There's nothing on its PCB that would indicate the card was made by in Sonic except for the chipset. Moreover, when I was looking for some information about the card, I came across this. It's exactly the same card, but branded as a reveal. To make the matter even more confusing, when you look for the FCC number, you find out the card is registered under Packard Bell. So I reckon the story is as follows. Packard Bell manufactured the first card using Ensonix chip and wavetable samples, and then OEM'd the card to SPA and Reveal. The second version was made by Ensonix, creating their own card calling it S2000 and also OEMing it to SPA. At least that's what I think happened. Moreover, the two SPA versions use their own drivers, and SPA claims they are not compatible with each other. However, I used an Sonic driver for my S2000, and when I switched it for the SPA card, it worked just fine with the S2000 driver. What I forgot to mention in the previous video, and what is pretty much the main reason for this video, is the MPU-401 interface on the S2000. All ISA sound cards I know, including S2000, use so-called dumb MPU-401 interface, and as far as I know, there are only a handful of cards that use intelligent interface, like 5 or so. They're not even sound cards, just an interface that eats up an ISA slot, but lots of older games depend on it. The S2000 of course has dumb interface, and I was wondering how it compares to other ISA sound cards. I've prepared all sorts of games for this test, all sorts of sound cards and two external sound modules, Roland SCD70 and MT32. Well, first, I used an MPU-401 port on the Sound Blaster or 32 to see how this card can handle sending MIDI messages out to these two modules. I started randomly testing games kicking off with classics such as Doom, Duke, Dune 2, Gabriel Knight, TFX, etc. All games I tested worked flawlessly with both modules using General MIDI or MT32 or Rally PC, until I came across a game that expects intelligent MPU-401 interface, and as expected, it just didn't even try to communicate with the MT32. Then I tried another, and another, and another, and found out that out of about 200 games that need intelligent interface, work, well, none. Games either crashed, didn't start at all, or simply didn't make any sound. Then I tried some Aztec card, the same result, Miro card, the same result, Terratech card, the same result, some no-name crap, the same result, the same results no matter what card I put in. And then I slammed the S2000 in a slot and fired up DOS. To be able to use MPU-401 interface, I had to go to Assassinit program and turn the external MIDI on to make the card root the MIDI signal out. Then went to flashback directory and typed FB, and then this happened.
so I tried another, and another, and another, and found out that out of about 200 games that need intelligent interface, work, well, all of them. I was gobsmacked. This means the only sound card that can utilize sort of intelligent interface is in Sonic Soundscape S2000, as far as I know. So if you want to buy the actual MP401 just for the intelligent interface, get the S2000 instead, you'll get the MP401 and an excellent sound card in one package for far less. Now to the comparison of these two cards. First, I tested the MPU for a one functionality and it works the same on both cards. I also tested general MIDI, FM and sound, and whatever works on one card also works on the other, and whatever doesn't, doesn't. Compatibility wise, these cards are identical. Second, I wanted to know if one produces more noise than the other and these are the results. And third, I wanted to know if they sound the same. On top of different layout, you can find cards with different ROM size. You can find two types of Ensonic sample ROMs out there, 1MB and 2MB. The 1MB ROM is a bit smaller compared to the 2MB ROM. Both of my cards have the same 2MB ROM, so I can't test the 1MB version, obviously, but I can at least test the quality of the cards themselves. 
I recorded a couple of tracks using both cards and found out they sound exactly the same in terms of instruments. However, the S2000 sounds just a tad cleaner, but that's it. Have a listen. If you're after the S2000, be careful about ROM it's porting. Yeah, sure, I have another 1MB ROM, but I reckon it's inferior. And that's it for this clarification video. See you next time, cheerio.